This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Johnson versus White. You all originally met in 1993. Uh, you reconnected, and now you've been married for two years. Ms. Johnson, why have you brought your husband to court today? Well, I brought him to court today because I suspect that he's still cheating. And if you find out he is cheating? He going home single. <laughs> it's... All right. Yeah. All right. So it's as simple as that. If he's still cheating, it's gonna end. Simple as that. Simple as that. I uh, see. Ain't no sign of working out. Ain't nobody needing to give me no counsel. I don't want none of that. Period. Point blank. None of it. Mr. White, what are you here to prove? I'm here to prove to her that I love my wife. I'm here to save our marriage. And I want her to just stop accusing me of all these cheating and all that type of stuff. I love her. Oh, I'm accusing you, really? No, see. Really? I'm Your accusing Honor. you? Your Honor. You're yeah. here to prove that you are faithful. Being faithful to her. Hmm, really? Hold on, Mr. Hold on, hold on. Let her speak so right. No, no, we're, everybody's gonna get a chance okay. to tell me what they want to tell me. Okay. So, I know that you all haven't always been like that. As right. passionate as she's looking and being about this, yes. there had to be some good passion in the past. Tell yeah, me about that. Well, I met him in 1993. We both went to school together. It was and like... she smiled. You see that? That's <laughs> uh -huh. the first smile we got out yeah. of her. She looked because up, she I, smiled. I mean, I love him. Really. Okay, I do. Right. But I love him enough to leave him if I know he done cheated. <laughs> Tell me back in 1993. <laughs> we were going to school together in Job Corps, and it's like the minute I laid eyes on him, it was like love at first sight. All right. And I'd be like, oh my God, I'm gonna get him. That's gonna uh, be my husband. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I used to take little pictures of him, and he wouldn't even know I was taking pictures. Here's one of the ones, and I still got this picture right to this day. <laughs> okay, you were seriously crushing. Yes. And so, when Facebook first came available, the first name I typed in when I got Facebook was my husband's name. Aww. Well, I found him, <laughs> sent him a message, no response. Pop up, I wait about four or five months later, go back, still no response. I said, man, oh man, he ain't gonna never respond to me. One day out of nowhere, ding! <laughs> <laughs> the happiest, the happiest ding in the world. Yes, and when I seen it, he just had his phone on my like, Oh my God, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? You mean all that time you didn't know what you gonna say next? No! <laughs> you... <laughs> so finally, I did, and the conversation just went from there. So it was the like, pitter patter. It was just like we had never lost contact. It was just like it was meant to be right then and there. All right, I gotta go to him. <laughs> so you getting hit up by this young lady on Facebook. What are you doing? Did you know who it was? I didn't know at the time who, who she was at the time. I didn't know. <laughs> because she goes by another name, um, Busybody, so... <laughs> <laughs> and so you... you reconnected. And the fireworks went off. It went off. Do you hear me? The chemistry was set. Boom! <laughs> uh, woo! Is that how yes. you felt? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I felt the same way. <laughs> It's like we would sit on the phone from the time he got out of work about 4.30 in the evening, clean on up until it's time for him to get back up to go back to work. We would never get off the phone unless one of our phones would die down. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me show you what that looks like. Yeah. You hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. You hang up. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, 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 we've done that. that. Yeah, I know how that... So that's what we were basically doing. Now, this sounds... Unbelievable. It sounds romantic. It sounds it, like the it, things it people write stories about. Why in the world are you in my courtroom? I'm in here today because one night he was asleep. I was up watching TV, me and my kids. His phone goes off. Boom, okay. there's a text message. I want to know what the text message said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horny. You gonna come take care of me? Oh, uh, that's a lie. That's, you, I, I never seen it. I you, never you seen, seen it. it. I never seen it. Because the text message here, when you go in there, that was the, that night message. But you know them other messages on up at the top. I it was a occurring conversation before then. And what was that conversation? I love you. I love you too. I miss you. I miss you too. So me being me, I called that skeezer. Oh. Yes, I called her. And I bet she was glad to get your call. She didn't care. She didn't care. She said, I don't care if you're married to him or not. Oh 
Yeah, so, so I never heard. So what did you I say? Never, well, I you know, quit playing wait, dope because I slapped you in I'm your admit. sleep and woke you up with it. Quit playing. Okay, so quit Mr. playing. Quit playing. So, Mr. White, do you remember a text message that says, "I'm so horny, come take care of me"? No, Your Honor. Are you I, telling this court telling none you. of this happened? I do not see no text. She is making all this up. Well, Your Honor. None of this happened. Uh -huh. This is a figment of her imagination. I, uh, something, I'm, I'm making it up. All right, you need to start oh, writing books. Your Honor. <laughs> well, let me let you know the proof that I have. All right. Huh. Okay. One Pacific day, I calls his phone. It was on a Saturday. I said, what you doing? I'm in my homeboy house. I said, your homeboy? He said, yeah, but I heard all these women in the background and all these different people. I said, where you at your homeboy? I said, get together. Why you didn't invite me? I'm your wife. So me being Miss Smarty Pants, as you called me, huh, I had GPS tracking on his cell phone. <laughs> Let me show you what I found. You have an exhibit? Yes, I got an exhibit, Your Honor. Okay. Please cross over to mm -hmm. the... Okay, this is the GPS locator that's on your cell phone thing. All right. So I'm still trying to figure out. So to locate, I had to press this. So I pressed the location button. And boom! I said, okay, let me see. By this time, I knew something wasn't right. God ain't gonna lead you wrong. So I told my kids, I said, y'all put y'all shoes on, we got somewhere to go. <laughs> I put my shoes on, me and the kids put the shoes on. We, we went on and left the house. So as we was going down the street, I'm listening to GPS, you keep straight, you turn, you turn. Okay. As I get a little closer, look at who I see. Our truck parked at whose house? His ex-girlfriend's house. And I presume his ex-girlfriend doesn't live with his homeboy. <laughs> no, she don't. If you'll go back to the podium. All right. Well, well. Mr. White, please clear for the court why your truck was at your ex-girlfriend's house at a time when you told your wife that you were with your homeboy. The reason why I was old, I knew it was wrong. It was uh, uh, her mother had passed. They always have a big gathering. You ain't in the family. For her mother. I was near my ex-girlfriend. Here I'm out there just talking. The next thing I know, I didn't know at the time she had Mason in hand. Oh. oh, boy. So she runs up to me, just shh. Oh. Yeah. She maced you? That's right. She That's took right. you down by a mace. Mace. Right out there in the yard. Right in there front in the yard. of everybody. Front of everybody. Ms. Johnson, tell me you didn't do that. Yes, I did, Your Honor. <laughs> I emptied a whole can out. You didn't even ask him why or he, what he that, was doing that there? The point he had no business there anyway. Ex is your ex. Because how would he felt if he'd have pulled up and I was at my ex's house? But if he's there paying his respect to the family because the family mm -mm. member passed away... That woman been dead. Yeah. <laughs> And when I walked in that yard, I told everybody out there, excuse me, I'm not coming here for no drama for none of y'all. Uh, my only uh, concern is that right there because that's my husband. <sighs> this is what I'm finna take care of. His exes are concerned for you. Yeah. That, yeah. Yes, yes, Your Honor. And do you believe that there's anything else going on yes, with his Your Honor, exes? Yes, I still do. Okay, right. and why do you believe yeah. that? Because, first of all, Your Honor, you know me, Miss Busybody, <laughs> all on Facebook lurking, like I always do. Guess what I come you across? You're doing this. Yeah, guess what I come across once again? Okay, tell me picture what you... with my husband and his ex and all her homegirls. Oh. All right, Rod, would you please get that picture for us? Oh, my God, that picture's so old, I don't know what this is. It ain't that old. So this appears to be, Mr. White, a picture of you yeah, with I... a number of females in the picture. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And, and who... Any of these people in the picture your ex-girlfriend? No, Your Honor. Okay. Was this posted on her page? It was posted on her best friend's page, and she was tagged to it, too. Oh. Okay. So, so, so how do you know this isn't an old picture? I mean, he, he says it was your an ex-girlfriend. That, that hat that he has on, I right. bought that hat since we've been married. The whole outfit he has on, I bought since we've been married. So you tell me how is it an old picture. Okay. So why, at any point after you were married, and That's... after she's bought you this hat and whatever else you have on, you're in a picture with your ex-girlfriend. Your Honor, now one of them girls on there is now one of my exes. Them just, you know, you have friends, you do just at, at their house, they just tuck a picture. 
Okay, you don't see the pattern here of why your wife is concerned about your behaviors? Do you see it? Yes, I see it, Your Honor. Okay, because it's pretty doggone clear to me <laughs> why she would be highly suspicious of your behavior. Even when you're not doing wrong, the things that you've done make a that's, woman I mean, go, that's, hmm. that's past. I mean... Okay, so... tell me why you believe he's cheating now. He'll tell me he go on one place and that one place that you can say you gone to that don't take but maybe 10 minutes, it turns into two, two hours. So my trust, once you break the line of trust, it ain't gonna never be the same. And you believe that he's still hanging In out my heart, with I the ex? I can't believe he's still doing wrong because occasionally I still see little stuff on Facebook. Like if he's sleeping, I get his phone and I just browse through Messenger. Baby, he got maybe two or three hundred females with the waving and the how you doing and the missed call things on the app thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna think that. So Mr. White, do you admit that you're flirting? I'm not flirting. <laughs> okay, you're sending waves to extraneous women on social media. I'm not, I mean, I'm not sending no waves. The, the little things are already right there. I'm not sending nothing. You're just me. clicking. I'm just looking through it. I'm not even on Facebook anymore. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, Mr. White, let's just cut to the chase here. Have you had sex with anyone, any other woman, since you've been married no, Your to Ms. Johnson? No, Your Honor, I haven't. All right, this marriage is on the line. I know it's on the line, but she's I She's have... told you from the beginning... Yes, Your Honor. ...if you're cheating, she's gone. So this is your chance to come clean. I mean, I have it. Something gotta be wrong, because we ain't doing it. Oh. oh. Well, All right, Ms. Johnson. Sex? Please explain that to the court. Ever since that incident, I just don't feel that. Because I feel like if you still doing something with somebody else, you're not finna do nothing with me, because there's too much stuff going on out there. <laughs> it's been over a year. The last time you were intimate with your husband has been more than a year? Yes, Your Honor. Do you all sleep in the same bed? Yes, Your Honor. Wow. How do you feel about that? How do I, I feel bad about it. So this is a marriage on the line? It's on the line. It, Whatever Johnson? happens today is gonna determine whether he leave her still married or he leave her single. And if this test and information comes back that he is, in fact, not maintain your marital vows. You're done. I'm done. But if we confirm that he has been faithful, y'all gonna walk out of here together. Mr. And I'm Mrs. not gonna look back. I'm not gonna accuse him of nothing else. I will leave the past in the past. All right. Because I do love my husband. All right. Well, there it is. I want to prove to her I'm not doing anything. That I love her. I love her with my kids. And I've been with her... We've been together thick and thin, me and this woman have. All right. To get to the bottom of this, uh, the court has retained the services of licensed private investigator Mark Henry. Would you please escort Mr. Henry into the courtroom? Yes, sir. Mr. Henry, it's good to see you. Good day, Your Honors. Good, good to see you. This court also ordered a polygraph test, and we have those results. <laughs> Mr. White was asked, during your two-year marriage, have you had sexual contact with your ex? What was his response? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that, uh, he was being deceptive. You lying, no good. You just know. Not in this courtroom. We're not gonna disrespect the court. We understand your anger. We understand you're upset. This is a place of decorum, okay? Mr. White? Mm -hmm. The lie detector indicated that you were being deceptive when asked about having sex with your ex. I mean, I don't see how I have it. You still maintain that you have not I had any had sex, sex with that woman. I have your... sex with nobody. In over a year. Over a year, Your Honor, I have it. I'm being honest. I don't know why is it saying that. I have it. All I do is come, go to work, and go home. I haven't did nothing. And Ms. Johnson, you don't believe that? No, Your Honor. I can't believe it. I know I haven't did nothing. Guess he's single, then. You look absolutely If y'all only knew the beginning to the end to understand, I picked up my children and relocated and moved to a whole nother state to be with this, and this is what I get? I moved away from my parents, my family, to go to a whole state where I don't know nobody, and this is what I get? 
You need to tell him. This is what I get, really? You know I ain't did nothing. Tell really, me this exactly is what I get? how you feel right now. This is really what I get. Baby, I haven't did nothing. All that I've done for you, this is what I get. I haven't did nothing. <laughs> really? I mean, I don't know why. I haven't did nothing. Your Honor, before we came here, I gave him all opportunity to be honest. And you brought me here and made me well, look like a fool anyway. You brought me here. <laughs> well, Miss Johnson, you came here for answers. You have a decision to make? It's made. And mm -hmm. I'm leaving her single. You dated for a period of time and recently broke up, and you are contemplating getting back together and being willing to restore and renew your relationship if he hasn't cheated in the past. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Tell me why you've opened your case. Okay, so I opened this case because me and Anthony was in a relationship, and it's on the line because... If he cheated on me in the past, I'm not going to go on a trip on him with him. I'm not going to get back together with him at all. I'm not going to do anything. You have a trip planned. Yeah, so... So this is serious. Yes, he invited me on a trip to go on a cruise for his birthday in a few weeks, and... <laughs> I'm not going to go... You're a good girl because there's other folk who go on that trip and just say, oh, whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, tell me what you're here for, Mr. Garner. Okay, Your Honor, I'm here because I love my girlfriend. I just, I just want her to know that I wasn't cheating on her. And I got her name tattooed on me, you know. Oh, man. Why'd you do that? <laughs> to show her that I, I love her and I still care about her. So he put permanent ink on Mr. Cullen. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you better hope you pass these tests because, <laughs> I mean, you, you're going to be stuck with that. So. Yeah, unless you find another edge and they, you in trouble, man. Uh-uh, I'm the only one. I don't know you can make that like a... <laughs> uh, you can't even turn that into mom or anything. You, uh -uh. you got to stick with it. Tell me about the happy times. How did you meet? I had just quit my job on a Friday. <laughs> And I wanted to go out and have fun. So I was like, all right, let me like some people's stuff. So I ended up seeing his post on Facebook saying who want to go to uh, the amusement park in Kansas City. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to like it. He inboxed me. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, they, all right. They didn't show that strange, they, Yeah, you just go out there, you like somebody, and then... You go on a date. So you go to the amusement park. What happens at the amusement park? We went on all the rides. We got to, like, a water ride. And, like, as I'm going down, I peed on myself because, like, <laughs> it was going too fast and I was scared. <laughs> so then, when I got down towards the bottom, I thought my wig was gonna fall off. So, because the tube tipped over, he caught me, but it tipped over and, like, I was... Some of my hair got wet and I was like, dang. <laughs> All right, Colin, that's a first date for the record book. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. And, and you, you stayed. Still... In, you stayed in the game. The yeah, no, I, you stayed in the game. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so you go from kicking it to coming to see me. What happened? Okay. So what had happened was. Oh no! Uh -oh. <laughs> what happened was. Ooh. Okay. Let me, let me okay, sit back for so... this one. Starting November of 2017, we met up at a liquor store and switched cars. And we was going to his house, so I told him to follow me to his house. When I got there, he was a little bit late, so I was just, like, start going around his car, like, looking through his car. So I got to the uh, glove department, and I see a phone in there, and I'm like, this ain't his cell phone, because we both got iPhones. So I go in so there... So a secret oh, phone? Yeah. So I'm like... Okay, what's going on with this? So as soon as I pick it up, it rings, and I'm like, hmm, let me answer. So I answer it, and the person hangs up. So I'm like, okay, what is going on? So I'm like, I'm just gonna keep this for a little while because you're gonna be looking for it <laughs> if somebody calling it. So I kept it a few weeks, and then... Hold on, hold on. Did you know the phone, the secret phone was missing? Yeah, I knew it was gone. <laughs> did you know she had it? Yeah, before all that Why happened... did you have a side phone? Okay. But before all that happened, she was getting all my information, my contacts, and she was contacting people out of my phone. So instead of me confronting her about it, I just got another phone and told everybody, like, just call me on this new phone. It wasn't just, like, one female that I told to call on that phone or just girls. I told my male friends. I told everybody, just call me on this phone. Something's wrong with my but phone. But she thinks you got a side phone for a side piece. I know that's what she thinks. <laughs> yeah, because he knew that I had it, so I was like, what's the passcode? And he's like, 
you know, let's just throw the phone out. You know, let's not do none of this. Just throw the phone out and start over. Okay. But that's, my that's question is, is that the only suspicious thing you saw no, on the phone? No, so the other thing that happened is he comes over to the bed and sat next to me and holds my hand. And I'm like, what's going on, you know? So then we're laying down in the bed together. I'm laying on his chest. We're talking, watching a video on Facebook. And so a message pops up. So wait a minute. Hey, so this is what... So you laying you like, like this? Yeah. <laughs> Put your hand on his chest, on his heart a little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't want to mess up your hair, but I... I'll, don't mess up my hair. All right. And so you you all have his phone. Yep. And, and y'all look at it something. Just kind of watching like the that. video. Okay. Just so you're looking like at his that. phone. Color, you know, these are young folk. Because I would need a screen about that big. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then what happens? Okay. And so then a text message pops up from some girl talking about, hey, daddy. What? Yeah. Pops up on his phone. Buy some full body pictures. She had clothes on, but like full body pictures talking about, hey, daddy, you know, what you doing or whatever. And, so and that's I'm what like, you submitted to the court. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, so you're, you're watching you're this video. In, and it pops up. Yes. What, what you doing, daddy? You like, who is this? Well, no, I, I didn't say okay. nothing. I was quiet for a second. And then he was quiet, so he didn't say nothing. I'm like, so what is this? And he's like, what is what? Trying to play it off. I was going to tell her when I first got home. I was going to tell her, I was, you know, I gave this girl at my job my phone number. I was about to tell her. But she had cooked dinner and then, like, a whole bunch of stuff, and she was acting nice. Yeah, she usually I even don't... bought him some shoes and yeah, everything Yeah, she, she usually day. don't act nice. But I was just... Gonna... <laughs> so, so at the time, it didn't seem like a good time for me to be like, you know, oh, I just gave this girl my number. This is a woman that you just met at work? Just met that same day. Okay, and so her... Initial text to you is, what's up, daddy? Right off the gate. <laughs> right off the gate. I mean, right what was going gate. on for her to say that? Yeah, how did it that was, come uh, about? It was real friendly, you know? <laughs> and, uh, really? Yeah, yeah it was to real get friendly. to what's up, daddy, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it was real friendly. And uh, we was talking during, you know, at the job. We was talking to each other, you know, I guess flirting, whatever. And we was just, like, flirting. So did anything ever happen with this woman? Ever in life. Well, yeah, ever in life. <laughs> Maybe, like, after the breakup. Okay, wait a minute. Now, look. I got kids your age. Ain't no maybe. Either you did or you didn't. Exactly. You're in or after you're out. The breakup. You did, huh? After the breakup. So you've been with this woman allegedly since the breakup. Yeah. Have you been with her in a sexual way? In a sexual way, yes. All right. Well, there it is. But after the breakup. After the breakup. Yeah. Do you believe that? You think it was before the breakup? I really honestly don't know. That's why I'm here today, to find out. Because you want know. answers. Yeah, I want to know. Because if, if he did, I'm not going nowhere with him. He's going to be going by himself or with her. So. All right. <laughs> so, my question to you, Ms. Bell, is have you ever caught him with someone? Okay, so just recently, April of this year... Um, I came over to talk to him. We had started getting in an argument, so, you know, I had left. And so I came back less than an hour. Come back, it's a car outside. I'm like, this car looked familiar. His ex-girlfriend car, familiar. So I'm like, okay. So let's, let's, let's not jump the gun here, Angie Calm down. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me just knock on the door, you know, see what's going on. He don't want to answer the door or answer none of my texts or calls. My ex was there using my Wi-Fi. Okay. Because she goes to school. <laughs> Thank you. A, we'll come back she goes to, that. to school. No. And so I, I knew she was calling at the time. I knew she came to that door. I didn't want it to be a confrontation. Right. So to avoid confrontation, I just, I just didn't answer the phone or open the door. What happens from there? What happened from there was, so I got a phone call from my neighbor, and he said, there's a fire on your porch. <laughs> yeah, so... A fire on your porch? Right on my porch, right by my door. Yeah, so I'm... I Miss, come put well, the fire... Hold on, hold on. Miss Bell? Yes, did you see are. that fire when you came up there? Yes, That's I crazy. did. Why did you see... How did you see the fire? <laughs> how did I set it? She set the you fire. Set the she, fire? You set the fire? set the fire. She set the fire. Oh, Lord. Okay, but seriously, though, because I was mad, I was hurt, because I'm like, why is she out at his house? And so, like, I was just... H hold on, Miss okay. Bell. all right. So, so, you see this, this fire on your porch, what do you do then? 
I go to my car and can I show you over here what, what she did to my car? Okay. <laughs> okay, so. So you go check, something's I telling go, you to go look at your right, car. Right, just go to the car and see, make sure all your windows is there and everything. So I go to my car. Oh. And then I open the gas tank is already open just like this. And it's chocolate, sticks, Ooh. I don't know what else she put in there, rocks. In your and car tank. In, in my car tank, shoved it down in there. I can't even, I can't even put gas in my car or nothing like she just did all that, and she didn't ask no questions. She didn't try to figure out what was going on. Woo! Why would you do that? Say, why would he have his ex in his house? Okay, but you... But... You teared up his car. Yeah, so when he have his ex at his house, he just for future reference, to if your ex at your house again, that's what your car gonna be. You can't put gas in your car no more. Okay, but you're, <laughs> you, you're saying that your ex was there and there was nothing going on but nothing Wi-Fi. On. High speed internet. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. She's right. talking Wi-Fi like Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's what she's talking yeah. about. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> so, Miss Bell, let, let, me, let me talk to you. Okay. Um, and I'm old enough to be your mother, for <laughs> sure. So, I'm gonna talk to you like I talk to one of mine. <laughs> Don't do this. Yeah. Mm. yeah. This is not a good look. Legally, that's a problem. Yeah. Arson, that's a problem. Those yeah. are felonies. Yeah. So we don't need that in your good life. Right. I don't want to be doing none of that stuff. That's not I... a good look. <laughs> all right, love. And Mr. Garner, after all this, you still want her back. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love her. And I just, I just want her to know that I'm, it's not, you know, I'm not cheating. It's not even that big of a deal. Like, it costs a lot of money to fix cars. I don't it, care. It does. <laughs> That's a lot. And so you're like, it's one thing if you had been cheating, right. but you're like, she's done all this. She's setting fires on your porch. She's putting candy and sticks on your gas tank, and right. you're not even, you weren't even cheating. Right. Innocent. All right, love. I think we got enough. Let's talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> okay. Well, you think it was something going on with the coworker? Yes. You think it was something going on with his ex? Yes. And he's he's using that secret phone to hook up with other people. Yeah. And if he did do that while you all were together, you're not getting back together, you're not going on the cruise, it's over. That's 100% correct. And you're here to convince her nothing happened. Yep, that's what I'm here for. Well, to get to the bottom of this, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call a certified polygraph examiner, Kendall Show, to determine, is he cheating? Mr. Shaw, how are you today? Great, Your Honor. Good. How are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. All right, Mr. Shaw, you did a little polygraph examination of Mr. Garner. I did, Your Honor. For the record, could you give us a little bit about your credentials? I spent, uh, I was privileged to spend almost 30 years uh, with the FBI in Washington, D.C., spent my whole career there. And when I retired, I uh, was actually chief of the entire FBI's polygraph program and uh, retired, moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, and started my own private practice there. All righty. So you asked Mr. <clears throat> Garner some questions. The first question you asked him was, the day you claimed Miss Bell put a candy bar in your car gas tank, did you have physical sexual contact with your ex? What was Mr. Garner's response? He responded, no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. <laughs> I saw a big smile on your face. <laughs> All right. Mr. Garner was asked, while you were in a relationship with Ms. Bell, did you have physical sexual contact with the girl whom you work with that sent you the text message, hey, daddy? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being... Deceptive, Your Honor. Mr. Garner, you know, that text message struck me as strange because that's just not what you lead off with, hey, daddy. Usually you call somebody daddy because they done took care of you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
you were involved with this woman while you were in your relationship with Ms. Bell, right? Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna just say I, I, I agree that, you know, I made a mistake, you know. Um, <laughs> I apologize for the mistake, and I mean, I hope that we can get past it. So you're admitting that you cheated? It was only one time. It was a mistake. We was going through some, like, a rocky time. Miss Bell. He's lying. Miss Bell, evil. you have come here to find out the truth. And we did drag it out of him, sadly. Yeah. What's going through your mind at this point? I'm mad right now because I've asked him several times before we even got here, you know, did you do that? And he just lied. So, no, he's going on a cruise with whoever he wants to and we're not getting back together. In your next relationship... Yeah. I hope you've learned something from this relationship. Any relationship worth having is worth going through the rocky times. That's right. And so you can't, every time Preach. you have a rocky time... <laughs> every time you have a rocky time, you go running somewhere else. Go, Daddy. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I said that out loud. You said Daddy. I did. What does that imply? You took care of me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you all are engaged. You've known each other since you were seven years old. But today may be the last day of this relationship, depending on what happens here in this courtroom. Am I right, Mr. Lowe? Correct. All right. You've brought this case. Tell us why. I believe that she's cheating on me. Um, she's very secretive with her cell phone. Um, she has passcodes that she changes. I have a passcode on mine. She knows the passcode to it. I can see it all over your face. This is really hurting you. Yes. Tell me about how you feel thinking that your fiance is cheating. Uh, it kills me. Okay. Um, I'm a stay-at-home father with our kids. Uh, she goes to work. So you're home keeping the home. She's working. But you think that sometimes there's something else going on, that she's not being true to you. Yes. Okay, Ms. Meyer? Ms. Meyer, your fiancé says you're cheating on him. That is not true. I did not cheat on him. I have not ever cheated on him. Uh, as far as my cell phone goes with the password on it, I just being petty. All he's got to do is ask to see my phone, and I'll let him see it. And he doesn't ask, so you're nope. gonna let him see it? Nope. Well, I they do. say the I hungry bird ask. has no, to open don't. his mouth, so... I don't definitely ask. do ask. But you understand how you are fueling these suspicions that you're cheating on him. I do. I'm just being petty. Hey, so I, you, I, you I, admit I that? I admit it. All right, well, the first step is admission, Mr. Cutler, so... I, well, <laughs> let, let, let Wait, me make sure on. I got this straight. No, no, no. Let me make sure I got this straight. <laughs> you all are engaged to be married, right? Yes. Okay, and you admit to being petty. Yes. That's not a good way to start a relationship. No, not I wasn't. I mean, I believe in karma and I believe in revenge. So, you want to be petty, I'm going to be petty right back. Well, if you believe in being petty, if you believe in karma, if you believe in revenge, why shouldn't this court believe that you believe in cheating? But there seems to be more than just pettiness going on yeah. here. Why do you believe that? Up until last year, she was a stripper at, the, at a strip club. And um, she had told the... Uh, well, I went there one time to go pick her up. Okay. And uh, she had told the bouncer that to not let me in and the manager because I asked to speak to the manager. In the meantime, while this is going on, I see her walk across to go to a champagne room, which these gentlemen pay $150, $200 to go in and, and get a private dance, and there's a curtain closed on there. Come on, I know what goes on behind the curtain, and, I mean, there's no cameras back there, so you tell me. I mean... And you know about the champagne room. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you do. <laughs> yeah. T tell me more about the champagne room. Well, I'm just saying, just because that you go in the champagne room doesn't necessarily mean that there is sexual contact or sexual intercourse going on. Amen. Amen. You want to be very entertaining as a performer because the more engaged the club goers are, the more money that you're gonna make. Right. And the more liquor that they're gonna buy, that's where the that's club right. makes their money. You know, I am really intrigued by how you know so much about what goes on in the champagne room. But right now, we're here for Mr. Lowe <laughs> and Ms. Meyer. So, I... I that's, I'm a, a, I'm a, that's a post forum discussion. Yeah, I'm gonna turn... <laughs> I'm gonna turn my attention to them for the moment. But I will say, the problem is, what Mr. Lowe's concern is that people are paying extra money to go into the champagne room 
for a reason. Correct. They get yes. a special attention. Yes. Of a sexual nature. Yes. And you think that's why she's going to the champagne room. Exactly, yes. And you believe she told them not to let you in? No, they, they told me that she told them that. <laughs> so... Ms. So, Meyer? And more than bubbles popping. <laughs> more than bubbles popping. <laughs> Let me just say there was an incident where I did tell my manager and the bouncer do not let him in because he had come in before. He used to come in all the time and watch me dance, but it started getting to the point where he would interrupt my dance. Now you're Wrong. messing with my hustle. You're messing with my money. Okay, but they can see dancing out on the floor. These people, according to Judge Cutler here, who's an expert, <laughs> say these people are paying more money to go They're to the pay champagne They are room. paying more money for privacy. So Can this I is... show you, Your Honor? I have evidence. Can I show you what yeah, I do I... on the poll? Show me what you do. Okay. <laughs> Miss Meyer, I, I gotta tell you, I never thought I'd say in my courtroom, show me what you do on the poll, but, okay. you know, who knows? How about that, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh. well. So, all right. And are you saying that's as sexual as it gets in the in the champagne room? Yes. Okay. It doesn't go any further than that. Okay. All right. Is there been anything else that makes you think that Miss Myers is cheating? Absolutely. There's a sugar daddy that she has that buys her a seven thousand uh, dollar van or whatever, and any time that she meets up with this sugar daddy, so to speak, I'm not allowed to go with, none of that, none of that kind of nature. And you not obviously all. think, what man is buying someone a $7,000 vehicle unless something's going on? Exactly. Yeah. All right. What man buys you a $7,000 vehicle? You know, this, uh, this is actually very absurd. This isn't even a question in the matter because he did, buy me, me. he did buy me a the vehicle, same sugar but daddy. he drives oh, that vehicle. He gives me money, but I split that in half with him. This is absurd. I have nothing more to say about it. The same. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Lowe. <laughs> okay, so you admit getting the vehicle. You admit this person gives you money. Are you sleeping that, that... with him? No. No. Because that sounds like... He used the phrase sugar daddy. That's what, kind of what it sounds like. If that no, was the case, if that, that was the case, the then case. why is the same sugar daddy send you a text message with the, the, the text saying... <laughs> Question mark. Okay. I did get a text that said that. I was sitting right next to him and showed him. I did not respond. But here's the thing. You have a man who's bought you a vehicle who's asking, will you do oral sex? It sounds like he's now wanting something for the vehicle or the money you've been given. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't know many men who are going to pay $7,000 for, you know, give I a woman $7,000 vehicle. I do understand that. But, you know, being a dancer, you got... It, that, that's what we call regulars. We don't refer to them as sugar daddies. And he shouldn't be complaining because every time he met that sugar daddy and he got half of everything I got. He was right there the entire time and he drives the vehicle that I have also. Period. So you're like, hey, look, you knowing <laughs> you're enjoying the fruits of my labor <laughs> and so don't be complaining about it now. Exactly, exactly. But you're saying your, your fruits of your labor, that labor doesn't include sex? No, absolutely not. Mr. Lowe, are there any other men that you are concerned about? Um, there was this one time I had a family member uh, shoot me a text message where she was supposed to be at work um, asking me if I was next door to her, to her house. And uh, I said, no, why? She said, well, your vehicle's been next door to my house for a couple of hours. And so I asked, I shoot Ashley a message. I said, uh, you know, where, what are you doing? What are you up to? She said, well, I'm at work. Then she comes strolling back to the house. I said, where you been at? You know, she's like, I just got off work, you know, and that was the end of it. And I didn't bring it up until just, just here today. And it supposedly it turned out that it was her friend. Is this friend a guy yes. or a woman? He's a guy. Do you think that she's having sex with this male friend? Absolutely. But has she been to this friend's house before? Yes. It, what is it about this, this friend? Okay, because this same friend drinks beer and I found a six pack of beer in our fridge. Whenever we had gotten into an argument, I had left for the weekend, let things cool down. I come back, there's six pack of beer in my fridge. Oh. And this okay. is not beer, a brand that you drink? I don't drink at all. Was the friend at your house? Yes, he was. He was at my house, which, you know, he's my friend. If he wants to come over, he can come over. He brought beer with him. I said, you could put it in my fridge. It was hot outside. You don't want it to get hot, put it in the fridge. <laughs> yes, I did go to his house and hang out with him, not during work, 
after work and I had nothing to hide. We have GPS on each other's phone. He could track me the whole time. What was there to hide? Okay. But why did you tell Mr. Lowe that you were at work when you weren't? No, I had just got off work. I did not tell him I was at work. Do you remember him calling you while you were at the friend's house? Yes. Did you tell him on the phone that you were at the friend's house? Yes, I did. No. Then yes, you're I saying did. no, no, that didn't happen. Nope. Huh. Have you been completely honest with Mr. Lowe about all of these issues? Have you been truthful with him? For the most part. <laughs> oh, for the most part. Well, what part have you not been truthful about? <laughs> and we're not gonna go into that. Oh. Are you still stripping? No. How long ago did you stop tripping? In December of 2018. Okay. Has that helped the tensions in the home? Uh, yeah, for the most part, yeah. All right, Mr. Cullen, I think we've heard enough. And that's why this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner, Tommy Platt, to determine, is she cheating? Tommy Platt. Mr. Blatt, how are you today? Wonderful, Your Honor. How are you? Doing fine. Now, in addition to being a polygraph examiner, you also have a background in law enforcement. Is that correct? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Tell us about that. I was a sergeant of investigations for over 15 years. All right. Mr. Lowe has some real concerns about Ms. Meyer being unfaithful. And we've heard testimony about that. What did your team do in this case to investigate that? Your Honor, um, we had an associate that went undercover posing as a woman coming to court because she was too being accused of cheating. Miss Meyer and my associate had small talk about why they were brought to court and the accusations made against them. There was plenty of back and forth conversation. Was anything revealed? Miss Meyer did admit something to my associate, and I have the tape here. All right. Do you think you guys would, like, the trust issues would still go if you guys, if you were, like, still struggling? Oh, yeah. The last time I did it was in March of this year, but he doesn't know. Really. <laughs> I hope they don't ask me that, because... About your shouldn't? Yeah. <laughs> About this year, because he doesn't know that I did, and... You stopped in March? Mm-hmm. I danced from December to March, but he doesn't know. Is that correct, Mr. Lowe? You didn't know? I had no idea. Miss Meyer. I point blank asked you about whether or not you were still stripping. Why did you lie? Yeah, but... I didn't think it mattered because between them time frames, we were actually split up. But if it didn't matter, why did you lie? I didn't want to start another argument. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue with you. That's, <laughs> a, that's the beauty him. of sitting up here. I don't have to argue with you. Well, we so alone, were, you, were you all split up? We weren't split up like you that. You were not? We were like, like on like a break, I guess you could say. I had moved out or whatever, but we were still seeing each other. We have a child together. We were still communicating. We were still seeing, you know, hanging out, stuff like that. I just wasn't living there. Were, was your break such that you weren't supposed to be sleeping with other people? Correct. Is that your understanding? No. All right. So, Mr. Platt, you also conducted a lie detector test. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. You asked Ms. Meyer, have you ever had sexual intercourse with the man your fiance, Mr. Lowe, believes is your, quote, sugar daddy? So what was her response? Your Honor, she pled the fifth and refused to answer. Ms. Meyer, you pled the fifth? Yes. You refused to answer on the grounds that your answer might incriminate you. That's what pleading the fifth is, and that's what you did, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because you've been so forthcoming about everything else, you admit it. Why would you not answer that question? Because it's absurd. There's nothing to talk about right there. Like, there is... that's ridiculous that he would even say that. That actually makes me really angry and upset. So, I mean, I'm not answering anything about it. But, Ms. Meyer, you came here to clear your name. You say that's absurd. That's not what this is about. That's exactly why we're here. That's what's going through his mind. <laughs> if you haven't done anything, there's nothing to hide. Personal no. reasons. You realize you have not helped yourself with this. You understand that, right? Yes, I understand. 
All right. Well, we asked about the sugar daddy. Let's ask about the, uh, the friend. All right. You asked Ms. Meyer, since the beginning of your relationship, have you had sexual intercourse with your guy friend whose beer your fiance saw in the refrigerator? What was her response to that question? She stated no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being deceptive. <laughs> I well, not... Why are you here? He brought me here. Like, Do you want this relationship to work? That was my next question. In a way. In a way? Well... Well, when you say in a way, that means in a way you don't want to be in this relationship. Mr. Lowe, you came here for answers. You're not getting them. How are you feeling? I feel hurt. I feel kind of confused. I feel a lot of things, but I know one thing is that um, I'm walking away from this. Yeah. You might as well just took a knife and hit me right here with it. You get what you give. I guess so. Oh. And so, Ms. Meyer, you have no remorse about the fact that your relationship with Mr. Lowe may be over. Nope. I'm gonna go to you. <laughs> Mr. Lowe, we have counseling available for you. You all have a child together. Mm -hmm. You are gonna have to co-parent and figure that out. And under this situation, I would tell you to moonwalk quickly out of this courtroom to your next life, okay? <laughs> this is not where you wanna be. And you, you, you are beautiful on the outside, but the inside needs a lot of work.